President Trump speaking out on the impeachment probe in the House. He tweeted earlier, if they actually did this, the markets would crash. Do you think it was luck that got us to the best stock market and economy in our history? It wasn't. The president answering his own question there. All right, let's bring in George Schultz. He is the founder of Schultz Asset Management. And Lisa Erickson, she's the head of traditional investments at U.S. Bank Wealth Management. George, let me start with you. Um, uh, how are you seeing this all play out from a market perspective? Uh, there's obviously a, a lot of political gridlock happening. There could be a very prolonged impeachment inquiry. What does this all mean from your standpoint? I think that's right. I think you should expect more uncertainty, more volatility in the stock market. Um, I think you know interest rates will remain low, extremely low. Um, I think the impeachment proceeding is likely to take up a lot of time and effort. Um, I think lots of people will be distracted by that for a long time. And I don't think it'll be easy to find a, a new direction in the market. One thing I would say, though, is that in the fixed income market in particular, interest rates are extremely low. And you're seeing a huge amount of negative yielding debt right now, which is just really unprecedented in the history of the world, in fact. So, so we think there's a good opportunity to short sell long dated government debt, uh, perhaps some that's uh, negative yielding. Um, investors in that debt are basically guaranteed a loss. And we think that investors in the fixed income market, especially in that sector, are just way too optimistic about the outlook for the future. Lisa, do you agree with that? Are there some opportunities in the fixed income market right now? We actually are advising our clients to stay neutral on the fixed income market, meaning whatever is their long-term strategic allocation to fixed income, that they stand pat on that position. And the reason why is that even though rates are certainly uh, very low, while we overall see a balanced risk reward in the space, while on the one hand, again, valuations are not very attractive, from a diversified portfolio standpoint, we actually think it makes sense to continue to maintain some of those positions simply because they're balancing out some of the risks that we see present in the equity market. So we're advising our clients basically to stand on their positions. George, what are you seeing in the equity space right now? What are some sectors that you have your eye on? So the equity market in general, I mean, we are a late stage business cycle. Um, probably facing uh, a recession in the next year or two, um, or at least a, a slowdown. Um, so the equity markets have been on quite a run, though. And so it's hard to find good opportunities in the market. Um, however, if you dig through and you're willing to do the work, you know, getting outside of passive investing, there are certain companies that make a lot of sense on the long side and the short side. Um, so for instance, we are short selling a company called Pacific Gas and Electric, the largest utility uh, bankruptcy ever. Um, in that case, the company stock trades at about $12 a share, um, about a $6 billion market capitalization. What we think the equity market is missing is that for companies that go through bankruptcy, we should think this is obvious, but most of the time, shareholders get no recovery at all. And here you have a company with $6 billion of equity market capitalization where there is an opportunity to make 100% return on short selling the stock. Um, so that's one idea okay. that we found recently on the short side. On the long side, there are a lot of different value investments that we've found. Uh, for example, there's one company, Arch Coal, which is one of the largest metallurgical coal producers in the nation. They restructured their debt a little while ago, about two years ago. They eliminated with that, in that through that process, about $5.3 billion in debt. And now they trade at an extraordinary uh, two times EBITDA, or two times cash flow, yeah. extremely cheap. Lisa, what's driving your investment case right now? You know, there's been so much noise on the political front this week, um, especially between what has played out between President Trump and the president of Ukraine. But, you know, at the end of the day, is trade still the big driver when you think of, um, you know, what could be the headwind? I mean, it seemed like the comments from President Trump as well as uh, the Chinese delegation for the U.N. didn't seem to point to any kind of movement uh, that something will be resolved. We do think policy is one of the key uh, drivers for what's going on in the markets right now. And we really see it on two fronts. So one, as you mentioned, really is the trade. And there's obviously a lot of uh, ongoing watching and waiting with what's going on, mainly because of the uncertainty that it's producing. And when we actually look at how that's affecting the underlying economy, we are starting to see it show up in the data. So for example, if you look at the National Federation of Independent uh, Businesses, or you look at 
uh, a measure for larger businesses such as the Duke University CFO survey, what you actually see is you are seeing some dip in capital spending plans uh, because of that increased level of uncertainty. And so certainly that's weighing on markets. The other big uncertainty we see on the policy front is certainly that of central bank policy, whether it's here in the U.S. with the Fed or overseas as well. And uh, people have been, in a sense, really relying upon those central banks to continue mm. their accommodative policies in order to keep that valuation support, uh, whether it's for the equity markets or the fixed income markets. And so really, mm -hmm. we are uh, mm. seeing the markets continue to hang on every word and mm -hmm. every um, back and forth with what's going on there mm. in the central bank land. Okay. in terms of uh, pricing out future actions. Okay, George and Lisa, great to have you uh, both on the show today. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.